The question came up the other day as to whether it's possible to be compassionate and to pass judgment on other people's behavior. And the fact that we ask that question shows how much we need the Buddhist teachings in our culture. Because his teachings are precisely that, how to pass judgment compassionately. In our culture we tend to associate passing judgment with passing negative judgment, dismissive judgment, judgmental judgment, judgment that's meant to be hurtful. And so I think it must be compassionate to just simply accept. Accept what other people do, accept what you do. And then the Buddhist teachings are interpreted as a teaching of acceptance. We're even told that the Buddhist teachings, the basic ones like the Four Noble Truths and the Three Characteristics, are not meant to be value judgments. They're simply statements of fact that should be accepted. But that's a huge misunderstanding of the Buddhist teachings. For him, the basic categorical teachings are two. The Four Noble Truths and the teaching that skillful behavior should be developed and unskillful behavior should be abandoned. And those categorical teachings carry a should. And the second one is obvious. The first one, that if you look at the Four Noble Truths, you realize each truth carries a duty. And the Four Noble Truths are a judgment as to what's worth doing what's not worth doing. Craving the cause of suffering should be abandoned. The Noble Eightfold Path, the path to the end of suffering, should be developed. So there are shoulds right there, and the shoulds imply a value judgment, what's worth doing, what's not worth doing. Even in the very basic introductory teachings, when the Buddha is trying to establish basic principles for how to approach the Dharma. It's a question of learning how to pass judgment on your actions. And that also implies passing judgment on other people's actions, because after all, you want to be able to recognize in other people's behavior what's skillful and what's not. The first requisite is that you find an admirable friend someone whose behavior is worthy of emulation. So you look for someone who behaves in a way that should be followed. You're passing judgment on the people that you feel that would be helpful for you to follow, to emulate. When the Buddha taught his son, he told him to, before you act, and that means before you do something or say something or think something, ask yourself, what results do you expect to come from the action? And if you expect that there's going to be any harm, either to yourself or to others, you don't do it. Otherwise it should not be done. It's an action that should be judged as unworthy of doing. If you don't see any harm, or foresee any harm, you go ahead and follow through the action. But while you're doing it, you have to watch for the results that are coming out while you're doing it. And again, if you see any harm coming up, you stop. You judge the action as not being worthy of continuing. If you don't see any harm, you continue. When the action is done, you pass judgment again. Did it harm anybody? And if it did, you go and talk it over with someone else who's more advanced on the path. Make up your mind that you're not going to repeat that mistake again. If you don't see any harm that come up, comes up, you judge it as a good action, skillful action, and then you try to become more and more skillful. Have joy in the fact that you are advancing on the path. When Venerable Sardabhuta was asked how you introduce Buddhism to people who've never heard of it before, 
people say, what does your teacher teach? He says, the first thing you should say is, our teacher teaches the ending of passion and desire. And if they ask passion and desire for what, you say the five aggregates. That's a value judgment right there. These things are not worthy of holding on to them. They're not even worthy of desiring. So everywhere you look in the teachings, there are teachings on passing judgment. And the judgment is based on the criterion of, is the action harmful or not? And this is where we see that the issue of judgment here is basically compassionate. Because the shoulds of the Buddhist teachings are all designed for the sake of your true happiness. As he said, it was his job as a teacher to give you a sense of what should and shouldn't be done, particularly for the sake of your happiness. The Four Noble Truths are basically designed so you can put an end to suffering. That certainly is in your best interest. It certainly is a compassionate interest. So everywhere you look, where the Buddha is passing judgment, it is for a compassionate purpose, even when you're judging other people's actions. It's so you can reflect, do you have those actions in yourself? If you do, you better look at how they look in other people. If they look like they're harmful, okay, you don't do them. If they don't look harmful, you can try them out. And if you can't pass judgment on others, then you can't pass judgment on yourself. And, you, and if you don't pass judgment on your own actions, how are you going to learn from your mistakes? Because this is the basic principle throughout the teaching. You're not here just to obey directions. As John Lee once said, if you tried to write a book that talked about all the possible things that could go wrong in the training, it would be too big to be a book. What you have to do is learn the basic principles of how to recognize when you've made a mistake and how to learn from it. So the passing of judgment here is not meant to be a final judgment, as in a court. Or sometimes the passing of judgment can be pretty, pretty inhumane. I was reading recently, there's a theory among many judges that the purpose of the judicial system is not to come to a fair verdict, but to come to a final verdict. They don't like it when new evidence comes up that shows that someone that was found guilty was actually innocent. And they've been placing all sorts of restrictions around reopening cases that the finality is more important than the, the fairness. Again, it's not that something's wrong with our society. So the Buddha is basically interested in being fair, but not only, but not for the sake of a final judgment. In judging more like a craftsperson who's working on a piece of furniture, say. And you judge your actions as you go along, because you have a work in progress and you want it to be done well. And then if you play in the wood and you realize that you planed it too much, what do you do to correct? If you cut the pieces wrong, what do you do to correct? The purpose of the judgment is correction, which is why it's compassionate. And the Buddha also teaches you how to treat mistakes that you've made, where you've actually harmed somebody else. Again, a sign of his compassion. On the one hand, he shows how reconciliation can be made, if that's possible. And if it's not, you simply recognize that you made a mistake. Resolve not to repeat it, and then develop thoughts of unlimited goodwill, unlimited compassion, 
unlimited empathetic joy, unlimited equanimity toward yourself, toward the people you've wronged, towards everybody in the world. To reinforce that decision that you'd really do want to change your behavior. As he said, rolling around in remorse, the way a dog gets on its back and tries to be as submissive as possible when it knows it's made a mistake, it's not going to go back and change the fact that you made a mistake. And it actually weakens you. As if you beat yourself up over your past mistakes, you get to the point where you don't want to think about past mistakes, you don't want to recognize them, and so you don't learn from them. So we admit that you made the mistake, resolve not to repeat it, and then use goodwill for yourself as a way of encouraging yourself, goodwill for the person you wronged, and goodwill for all beings as a way to remind yourself you don't want to repeat that mistake ever again. You want to sensitize yourself to the fact that other people have feelings. They can be harmed. And it's interesting when the Buddha talks about harming other people. It's not a matter of hurting their feelings so much. It's more getting them to do things that are unskillful. For instance, when you break a precept, he basically says you're harming yourself. You get other people to break precepts, you're harming them. So you have to have respect for others. And respect involves having goodwill. As a way of encouraging you to behave skillfully. Now goodwill is not just a nice pink cloud that you extend out. Like those fog machines that they used to do when they <coughs> used to use when they made movies. Get a lot of dry ice and a lot of fans and just blow the air over the dry ice. And the fog comes up, but then it evaporates. It obscures your vision and doesn't last very long. For a lot of people that's what goodwill is like. But you want goodwill to be, as the Buddha said, a determination and a form of mindfulness. Mindfulness in the sense that you have to keep reminding yourself you don't want to harm anybody. Because it's not that goodwill is innate in the mind. Ill will comes to us just as easily as goodwill does. So you have to keep reminding yourself, wish for the happiness of all beings and be determined that you're going to act on that wish. That's your protection to ensure that you don't make mistakes again. So we can see that those Buddhist teachings basically are teachings on how to pass judgment as to what is skillful and what's not. Learning how to recognize it in your own actions, learning how to recognize it in the actions of others. So you can learn from their mistakes and from your mistakes. And realizing that the definition of skillful is also very compassionate. You don't want to harm anybody through your actions, through your thoughts, through your words, through your deeds. And if you have harmed somebody, the Buddhist teachings on how to deal with your past mistakes are also compassionate as a way of encouraging you to genuinely learn, to behave in a way that leads to the end of suffering. And that's what it's all about, passing judgment so as to lead to the end of suffering. How compassionate can you get?